Yo, yo, yo. Welcome back to the channel. Oh, it's been a while, hasn't it? <laughs> All right, I got I got a second here, so I'm gonna make an AMC video. Uh, I know I know it's been a minute, but we're gonna just do an update on some of the things that we've been looking at. Um, obviously yesterday we didn't do a formal update. Uh, and yesterday was the day I believe. Yeah, so spy dumped and everything like that. So we had this big old nasty bear candle. We were down like 11% almost. Um, and then going into today, which by the way, we talked about with the Fibonacci, right? Uh, we talked about that 786 region, right? We talked about it pushing down to that 23-ish kind of 2350 kind of zone. Obviously, it broke right down through that. SPY continued to dump. Uh, opening today so we came back down and what we got is a double bottom on the daily chart um, and then we'll have to look at shorter time frame yeah so you, so you have pretty much a pure double bottom here right I mean this is this is as close as you're going to get um, yeah you can see with pre-market that actually it was a little bit above um, which is good because and I got I got this question um so well no it wasn't a question i saw a tweet and somebody said is this the spring within the spring within the spring or something like that and then they were trying to be shady um which is fine uh but actually what this would be would be a test of supply in this smaller accumulation range that we've been talking about so for you if you were wondering uh that there's your answer okay so we came back down and we tested, well, we tested the demand zone, okay? Of this local trading range, all right? Okay. Cool. So um, still, you do, you do have, right? Now you have, okay, we know for sure that as it stands right now, if this is Wyckoff accumulation and it's not redistribution like we've talked about in the past, you still, this became a phase B distribution like we discussed, Right? And then you bounce right up off of this really hard. And you have this big explosion in post-market, right? Um, GME re released some fundamental news. Uh, well, we can take a peek at the GME chart as well. It's very, very accumulation looking before this sign of strength um, in that local trading range. And so what does this mean, right? So obviously, you have this big move up here. You hit this $26. And then you kind of retrace back down here. And you close with this little, looks like a hammer kind of kind of thing let's look at what this retracement ended up being okay so you have a 0.5 right you're holding above your 0.5 fibonacci for that local um you can see here right you shot underneath it and then boop you just bounced and you held right above it um so what is what, what are we looking at overall right so if you guys haven't already i want you to check out this guy on youtube his name is extreme games gains sorry gains okay you search him in, in amc and what he's done is and you know it's funny because i kind of like i i understood what he was saying but then i kind of was like just sitting there looking at my phone and i was like holy shit this looks like this okay so i tweeted it out um and i he kind of he was already saying that um and i and i was following him but I guess that I didn't I didn't fully understand like the very, very specifics of where exactly he was saying that we were at. Um, so let me I'm gonna show you them side by side because it's kind of funny. Here. Let's go. Well, if you haven't already, make sure you drop a like on the video. It helps the channel out tremendously. Helps get this content out to more people. Uh and dude, I'm actually on standard chart right now. Isn't that weird? I'm gonna it's because I want to show you that trend line. But um yeah, so let's grab this. Uh, I, okay. Copy. All right. So what you have here is the rundown from, like, you know, the $73 all-time high, right? Then you have this retracement. And this is what we've been referring to as our accumulation range, right? So what I'm drawing the comparison to is over here, this is 
the the this basically right so these two <laughs> this is this thank you so much dave for your great explanation right so what i'm saying is that the ex pretty much the exact same move is occurring here and that's what extreme gains was saying right um and so what are the implications of this well obviously i mean we can't we 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 can only know so much i suppose but i mean you i will say that little pop there if you if you continue to the upside you could make a good argument that you're here right you're at this this uh the second arrow of this lower retracement level where you where you broke below right so look at it from this perspective and then uh let me see how I wanna okay, like this, right? So you made a lower low, boom, bounce up, boom. Oh, and I think that in his stream today when I popped in there and I was talking to him about it, maybe this is where his question is. Is he's trying to figure out he's trying to figure out if we've had this yet. Per perhaps is what he was meaning to what I was taking from it. So he's wondering if we've had this, maybe because we just haven't had this like very, very violent break up before a breakdown to retest. I would assume that's what he's saying. But anyway, go check out his channel. He's been doing daily updates. Um, obviously, I've been having all the, the home stuff going on, so I haven't really had the opportunity to check out all of his updates um, and pay very close attention. But again, it's extreme gains. Go check him out, okay? Tell him Dave sent you in his comments. Um, He's a good guy. He's really, really, I mean, he's really putting in work, dude. Like, he, I can tell that he's, like, you know, he's all in, dude. Like, he's, he is trying, trying to figure this thing out. And I think he's doing a really good job. But anyway, um, also, if you look at the chart from a standard perspective, uh, you do have this um, potential trend line, you know. Well, I'd say it's more than a potential trend line now because you have, you have uh, a few points here, right? You have, like, a rejection, and then it kind of acted as support here before the run-up in January. Buy button, you bounced off of it here. You have a couple bounces here uh, before the June run-up. And now it appears that this zone is, and, and again, think of it as, like, right? If you, it's, it's a, it's like a zone. It's like a, um, and then Guitar Lifter in my Discord, if you haven't joined my Discord, make sure you join there. Guitar Lifter also was showing me his, his pitchfork. Uh, I think his Twitter might be Guitar Lifter as well. Let me go, let me go make sure. Guitar Lifter. Yeah, this guy. This guy, he, he's always putting in work on my, uh, did you see that? That was Composite Man in the background. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know what was up on my screen. Um... He's always putting in work on my on my Discord. Uh and look, you can see here. Uh <laughs> he's got he's got a lot of lines going on here, okay? But um if you if you sit down and you look at it, just look at it. Um what it is basically is that he their key it's basically a channel, right? Like you have channels. It's the key supports and resistances to the upside as well as the key supports and resistances to the downside that he has broken down. I see Fibonacci levels in here. So make sure you go check that out as well. So extreme gains and guitar lifter. But anyway, um, yeah, so we're looking at this trend line now. So where where does that from a pure technical standpoint, right? Because I don't want to sit here and talk about fractals, algorithms, stuff like that. Because I think that my role in this and the way that I can be the most effective is from a pure technical analysis standpoint, right? That's what I think. And also memes. I'm good at I'm good at memes. Um <laughs> So look, I think what you had here was a false breakdown, and then a, and then this was a, this ended up being like a falling wedge breakout. That's pretty good. Um, in the short term, let me make this to where these lines are in. Uh, look at how this line makes resistance right here. Isn't that interesting? And then it breaks up here. It gets real explosive. Isn't that something? Huh? Look, you break down below it. You go retest it. You get rejected. It's crazy how lines work, dude. Technical analysis doesn't work on AMC. It's, it's uh, oh, let me let me just say that. Okay, so I know what I get a lot is I hear people say a lot. It's a it, this uh, is a manipulated stock. It's manipulated, so technical analysis can't work on it. What I want people to do 
That's that that's their theory. And I don't I'm not sitting here, I'm not trying to poop on you or anything, okay? That's not the goal of what I'm saying right now. But I honestly believe that from it, from a fundamental standpoint, the way that you describe uh the way that people think that this is manipulated, I think that almost every stock is manipulated because um, those with the most money in, in uh, assets at their disposal have the ability to sway price in either direction that they want to. Uh, they can cause buying, uh, buying pressure and they can cause selling pressure from retail. Um, so I, to me, I just don't really know if there is a stock that isn't manipulated uh, from the sense of large institutions being able to control its price action on a day-to-day -day basis. So uh, I, I just wanted to say that because that's something that I get like a million times a day, obviously. Me and anybody else who does TA on, on AMC gets that. It's not just me. Uh, but yeah, I just thought that I would share my opinion on that. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, so you have now... And look, like I've said over and over again, okay, before I get these these slimy, slimy kind of subtweets or whatever again, I've said it a million times. This is potentially Wyckoff accumulation, okay? With this being your resistance zone, this being your uh, support zone, okay? Now, in Wyckoff accumulation, it's very key that whenever you have these key uh, tests of supply or demand that you get the proper reaction, right? So whenever you uh, get rejected, you want to get rejected in the volume, you want it to remain relatively low. Whenever you come down and you test for support, you want to have relatively high volume, okay? Compared to the rest of the trading range. If you don't get that, right, then you, then basically what it's going to do is it's going to invalidate the accumulation, and it's going to make it to where now they're going to look for a, a, low, a new lower zone to accumulate in, right? And I know that the first response that I'm going to hear for that is, um, is well, they manipulate the volume. So how are we, you know, how, how is it supposed to blah, blah, blah. Um, I know that, you know, order flow delay is a big topic for conversation within uh, this community. Um, and I think that that is a very challenging question to, to answer, right? But it's just the reality of, of the play at this moment. Um, it's, it's just something that we have to look at it. Me and all the other technical analysis people, we are all looking at it the same way. And we're saying, look, you know, you, you get these bounces, you want the volume. And whenever you get that volume, you see these big up, upswings, right? And then you come back down, you retest, and then you get this weak volume on, on this secondary move. And then that's how you end up getting these rising wedges and then short-term distributions, right? And that's how we ended up here. We, we marked down here for the short-term distribution. So where, where are we stand now? Um, what I'd say is on a shorter time frame, uh, this does look accumulative, and then you have this, yeah, I mean, this is volume, right? Like this is this is some serious, uh, serious swings, serious volume going on here towards the beginning of the day. Uh, let's see how long this was going, about an hour and a half. Let's do a two hour candle and just see how much volume we got in there. So between the first two two hour candles of the day, you had 800, 900,000 volume. And then the rest of the day, you had 300,000 between, you know, over 300,000, 350,000 almost. Um, and then in, in post-market, wait, what the hell? Oh, because it's including in this. So hold on. Excuse me, guys. I'm really stupid, so just bear with me. Wait. Let me turn it to where I can see when post-market started. And then, okay, I know what I'm going to do. Sorry. Oop. Do this. Okay. And then I'm going to go to the one minute. Measure the volume in this post-market session like this. At one point, you were up as much as 17% in post-market, which is insane. 
and then you have 67,000. Is that accurate? Because I thought I saw way bigger numbers. Is it these pumps that are adding to that number? Anyway, um, let's look at the daily candle here. You had 59 million volume. Nice. Yeah, so, and then 45 million. So you've been increasing volume on these red days, which typically isn't good. But you do have, on today, the, the green volume outweighing on the hourly chart. Um, probably your OBV got, got a few ticks up here. But anyway, um, yeah, I'd say that what you're going to see here, I would probably measure this Fibonacci from here to here. And now you're sitting on a, on a 382. You got support at your 382. Mm, probably tomorrow with the... It's just, I hate when it pumps in, in post-market because... Oh, let's go go back and look at other times that we've had post-market pumps maybe, huh? I just hate when it pumps in post-market because when it pumps in pre- or post-market, the volume is so distorted. It's such such low volume that it's hard, it's hard for you to tell how legitimate the move is relative to the rest of the trading range. I'm trying to think of other times that it's pumped in post-market. This is a dump. Damn, I can't remember, man. I Dude, I remember there was a time. I remember a time. Did this? I don't know. Anyway, I mean, this is a big old nasty, engulfing, disgusting one-hour candle. Um, so I can't really see that as a bad thing. I think you'd probably come back down, uh, touch this 2350 or something. Maybe you do that in pre-market, and then you can try and catch your way back up. I know that also maybe I would look at it and say, well, I want to see a retest of the falling wedge. So what happened? Uh, you kind of just broke out of it. There's not a lot of data you just kind of had this intense like gap up here you don't have a lot of data when it comes to whether or not you did come back and retest i would say that you probably didn't uh and in your retest if it happens quick would be in the golden pocket so maybe that could be a thing where you come back down here boom and then you bounce up like that let's see let's see if that's something that's happened um, in previous big breaks like this. Because I, I do think that that's a falling wedge. I'm on log, yes. <laughs> I thought I wasn't on log. It's going to be terrible. Um, so, yeah, I mean, with this one back here, on the drop from 52, I don't think you... I mean, this is pretty much the same exact pattern. I mean, this is the same exact falling wedge, right? Like, this is... Yeah, I mean, this is, it's pretty much the same exact thing. It starts at a, at a higher peak than this one did, but you you kind of bounce up here, boom. Come down. Yeah, and you're you're loaded up from here. Yep. You have two taps on the bottom of it. You have the false breakout to the downside, false breakout to the downside, boom. Uh, you really didn't require a retest here. So what did you get here? You got a local, you got a local 707. Before you turn back around. Is this on log scale? Not on log scale. Put it on log. Yeah, 707. So let's see. What would that look like here? Let's change this to log scale so that everything is one to one. Um, 707 would bring you to 2230. Whew. That seems pretty steep. But it's certainly, I mean, it's definitely possible for sure. I mean, look, we're not out of the woods, right? Like, we, this, this, you can clearly see here that there is some like retesting going on. Uh, that's, that's going to need to go on. Let's look at VPVR and see, see how we're filling the bucket when it comes to, uh, the different trading ranges. If you're not familiar with VPVR, it's basically vertical volume, uh, based on the visible range. Um, I like to look at just like the recent trading action since we kind of dipped down here and just, how much we've we've built up. Yeah, I mean, you're still pretty... You're definitely gaining ground here in the low 20s, uh, but you're still relatively light, especially in this trading region, uh, like this 25 to 27. You could spend a little bit more time here. That wouldn't be the worst. 
So maybe you mark up here. You kind of just trade sideways here, load this up. Depending on how much volume you can get in this kind of sideways trading range on your pumps up, right? Um, maybe you could see you could see it swing up from here. Well, let's see. Let's see. Oh, well, you have a good amount of volume. Let's uh make it a little bit more specific so I can see. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm adding rows to it. Let me do like 300 or something. Oh, wait, no, this isn't the right thing. I don't care about this. Sorry. What the? Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right, it's this. Yeah, there you go. All right. <laughs> Sorry about that. So, all right, let's see. You look at, let's look at all time. Uh, dude, it looks a lot better than it used to. Before we came down here, this was like, blunt. it was nothing. It was nothing down here in this region. Um, so this is definitely an improvement. Definitely the lightest that you have is at this like 20, 20, 50 kind of, kind of zone here. You can see that little, that little VPVR candle that I keep trying to highlight, but this thing gets in my way. Um, that's definitely the lightest, but you're definitely filling this up. I mean, this was absolutely nothing, uh, before we, we started trading down here. So that's good because you can be building up support when you do that. Right. Um, that's kind of, kind of the, the goal is that you're building up this liquidity so that then like. If you go if you go higher again and then you come back to retest, you you can really get those consistent higher lows um, and and continue an uptrend if you if you look at it from that direction. Remember, this trend line is from regular, not log linear. Uh, ooh, your MOAS numbers up there, aren't they? But yeah. So I mean, you got this trend going. You probably need to fill up this VPVR a little bit. So if we get some, I really want to see some good volume like this good volume on these pumps up you do that over the course i mean that it doesn't have to be that long holy shit i mean i'm really zoomed out um but yeah i mean over the course of the next few weeks and months if you can if you can kind of kind of load up in this zone for the next like week or so and then you can really get some good volume going right here then when you break up you're going to have like this new nice floor and honestly, because of how much trading we've done up here now already, it makes it a lot easier for you to move through as well because what this basically is proving is it's, just think of it from an institutional standpoint. What they're going to say is, what they were saying before, when, when AMC was floating above this support region, they're sitting there going, okay, yeah, we'll test these high, higher levels, okay. Looks like we're running out of buying pressure. Let's send it back down. Test here. Okay, we tested here. Then we sent it back up, and then we said, oh, looks like we're running out of buying pressure again. You sent it down here, so let's test it here. Let's make sure that there's buying pressure down here, assuming there's no like order flow delay or whatever. Okay, just assume that for a second, just for the purposes of the, the teaching the indicator. Okay, now they're saying, okay, we're really going to test out this $20 to $30 range. We tried we tried to find that liquidity up here, get higher highs and stuff. We decided it wasn't ready. We come down here. We're testing this lower region to fill up this VPVR, essentially. You're going to see these bars come out wider and wider as the volume comes in. And then once they can say, okay, yeah, I mean, we've tested the top. We've tested the bottom of this local trading range, which is kind of this one, right? Now, we've tested the top and bottom of this a bunch of times. Looks like we get pretty healthy buying pressure here. Let's cause a run-up. They buy up really heavy here, cause this run-up. Now, because you have all of this consolidation up here in these, in these uh, higher regions, it can kind of just go right through it because they already know where they can find support and resistance up here. And that's how you get these sorts of moves. I mean, I can show you an example. I'll just pull up. I'm sure I don't know offhand if Microsoft looks like this, um, but Microsoft accumulated um, did Wyckoff accumulation. I mean, almost to a T. Back here, let me put it on. I hate looking at uh, standard charts, dude. I'm not. Sure. Um, no shade to anybody who uses standard charts. I just don't agree. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So. 
And we're looking at weekly here. Yeah, so what this was was kind of like a reaccumulation. And you can see here that they did all of this trading over the course of how long is this? This is 2000 before your breakout in uh, 2013. You got all this sideways trading. I mean, Microsoft was just in this in this channel between uh, 20 dollars $20 and like thirty two dollars for uh, literally almost fifteen years. It finally breaks out, comes back and tests this region here. You see that the VPVR is nice and built up, and it just gets sent up. Um, and that's just a markup phase, right? So institutions. Uh, you start to see really good narratives surrounding Microsoft, stuff like that. All that's happening. Um, and institutions just sent that thing to the, to the moon, dude. I mean, you literally go from like $30 to 10xing here. You're at $313 now. Look at how empty BPVR is now, playboy. Um, <laughs> relative to, to down there, right? Uh, stock price is higher, so it's harder to trade as many shares. Uh, but yeah, you do have some some pretty bad... Pretty, pretty bad gaps down here in like the 70s and stuff. But um, yeah, we'll just ignore that for now. Anyway, that was just an example. <laughs> oh, I hate the updated trading view. Um, But yeah, so what you want to see is, I mean, you would love to see a continuation of that move from pre-market. Um, and then per, probably what you'll see after that, uh, based on the VPVR, you pop up here. I know um, Max Payne, let's go look at Max Payne. I know that Tyler Tyler Wilson was talking about all the options um, holding you under $25. Um, looks like he might be in, in looking good for that uh, based on $24.31. But right now, uh, let's look at Max Payne. Up right quick for you. Max Payne is $26 right now. I wonder, I think this probably gets pushed down. 25. Um, so yeah, I think I think Tyler is probably right. Because based on the price action that you've had, you'll get that push down in the Max Payne. He was talking about all the all the uh just basically the options chain is working out to where 25 is gonna kind of be your ceiling. You probably consolidate here. Or maybe you consolidate above. Yeah, you consolidate above. That would be the best thing. The best thing would be for tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, other than, oh, you just moon. But if you just moon tomorrow, right? If you just get sent up tomorrow, you're almost guaranteeing that you're going to just come back down. Because you you just didn't, you didn't really, you just go up like this you'll get rejected by this point of control, I guarantee it. That You might actually see that tomorrow morning. And then you just consolidate here. That wouldn't be the worst thing. And then you try and mark up from here and then test this region before you break back up. That would be good. That, that's the sort of move that you want to see. And then you that's how you can kind of see the, this come to fruition, right? You have your sell climax event. You come up here, phase B distribution like we talked about. You go into this falling wedge, spring, test, boom. And then this is your last point of support. Mark up, well, you bounce up here, last point of support again. Mark up here, sign of strength above the trading range. And then you kind of back up LPS before you get sent up into the 30s. I mean, that looks pretty good, guys. Not going to lie. It's pretty, pretty convincing uh, stuff there based on where you need your volume to be. The recent move, how that happens. You probably open hot tomorrow. I mean, not financial advice or anything like that. Like, don't go buy like crazy weekly contracts if you don't fucking understand why I'm saying this. That would not be a good idea. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall, this looks pretty good. This looks this looks pretty good overall. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. When it broke down below that 786, I was like, damn, Playboy, we probably going to like the the high teens first. <laughs> but then, you know, it it kind of it kind of held its own. It got a bounce at the same time as Spy. That was fortunate for AMC. Um, caught that bounce with the with the indexes. You need indexes to have a good day tomorrow, man. Cuz if indexes are bad, you're going to you're going to come back down here. Everybody's going to be real sad. You're going to be at $22. 
if that happens, I feel like you probably do come down and test that 1950 that we've talked about before. Um, you test that out and then, and then you, you go from there. Um, after 1950, you have fibs at like 17, 1750, depending on how you measure it. And then after that, I think it's like 1450, $15. Um, that's like, that would be the next scenario. And we'll get there whenever we get there. I don't think that it's necessary to be talking about that right now though, but that would be the redistribution, uh, that I've talked about before. Um, and just going down to that big macro overall 786. But for now, I kind of feel like you got a little inception going on here where you you had this false break. Boom, you come here, you're doing the same kind of falling wedge and you had that false break. So you, I think you got justification now for you to get that move up. You just need the volume, baby. Just get that volume, baby. Um, but yeah, tomorrow's probably going to be boring as shit. I'm not going to lie. You might get a pop-up early and then boom. You do that little The Great Depression, you know, remember? <laughs> oh, man. You do the... Uh... All right, I'll show you. I'll show you quickly. All right, I'm almost a pro at this at this point, so let me just find it right quick. All right, remember back here, if you were if you were following the channel, you probably remember back here, I was making fun of uh, AMC because... Let me get this VPVR off of here. It's too much. But um, I was making fun of on the 23rd and the 27th, right? The day before and after the Christmas holiday uh, trading period. You had this big drop down here and then you, you kind of climb up, climb the ladder, you go sideways. And then you did the same exact thing when you came back from Christmas, like literally the same exact pattern. Um, I'll just briefly show you and you can go look it up on your own um, just because I'm not going to sit here and like chart it out for you like piece by piece because that would take too long. And the video is already probably long enough. I'm not even going to look at the time. Uh, I'm going to look at it. And then, no matter what I'm going to say, I got plenty of time. Oh, it's only 30 minutes, dude. Yeah, this isn't a bad video. <laughs> but uh, just kidding. <laughs> oh, fuck. Only I would laugh at that joke. Um, Let me just find it here. Short time frame. Let's just go to five minutes. Pretty easy. That way. Put a log. God now that I have spent time doing regular linear charting, my chart thinks that I like lo I like regular linear charts. That is not for me. Right? Anyway, all right. So <clears throat> I was so I'm I've been working on a historical chart of um the Dow Jones. Dow Jones has a lot more data than the SPY. They are slightly different. They're mostly the same though. Um and. I was working on that, and then I came and I looked at, at AMC's chart, and I think I actually looked at it a different region, it did the same exact thing. But um, when you zoom in on this, and damn it, this is a little too blocky. Yeah, I'd try the one. I don't want to spend too much time. This video is already long as shit. Sorry about this. It's, it's really funny, okay? All right, so here's that pattern, right? So... Just just ride with me here. All right, ride with me. Um, If you look at the Great Depression, this is a monthly chart of the Dow Jones. This is like 1930, right? You have this big crash down, right? What is this gray block of death? Okay. You have this big drop down, all right? And then on, on here, you got... Oh, no, that's terrible. This is why I use shapes. Let me use shapes. This is also why I'm bad at video games. Um, okay, we're going to make it brief. For Come on, Dave. Come on. You can do it. It looks better on, like, a 15-second chart, if I'm being honest with you. So if you have time, go, like, peek around at it. Uh, yeah, so you got this. And this. I'm sure you guys kind of see what I'm talking about. I didn't have to spend all this time trying to find the perfect tool to do this at this point. And then you have this kind of double bottom kind of thing you do here, right? Um, and obviously, this is less exaggerated because it's on a one-minute chart rather than months of trading. Um, and then you have... If you zoom out, it kind of just keeps um, keeps falling. Remember, monthly chart on the on the left here. Um, but yeah, so then you would say, boom here, and I drew a much better version of this before, but I deleted it because I don't know. I always delete my own charts. I'm such an idiot. 
And then you have this here. We'll change this to yellow. I just happened to be doing the historical chart. And then when I was looking at the Great Depression, I was trying to break it down from Wyckoff standpoint. I go, wait, what the f... It's the same thing. What? So then you do, you do this. Um... Mm, let's see. Okay, so this is where AMC ended up going. Let's see here, because because it looks so, it can look so similar that it's hard to like uh fuck. See, yeah, and then it just keeps going with this one. All right, yeah, this is it right here. Boom, that's your money shot, dude. Money shot, dude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> dude, money shot, dude. All right, so yeah, you get the idea, dude. It's basically, it's it's the same thing. It, it climbs up. I, I counted it perfectly. I had the exact waves or whatever. This is probably not the right one. Um, but yeah, some weird shit going on in our markets. Remember, this is a one-minute chart. This is a one-month chart. Uh, yeah, a bunch of weird shit going on in the market. So I know that people say, you know, AMC is manipulated and shit, but uh, I would argue that maybe... <laughs> Maybe more is manipulated than we may think. I would say like this, this right here. Yeah, I mean, you go, you go mess with it, dude. Maybe, maybe a good learning experience for you. Go, go learn that. Boom. Maybe here, this is like boom, boom, and then you know you could continue it if you wanted to that way. But yeah. So anyway, all right. That's gonna be the end of the video. Hopefully, this little tidbit was entertaining for you and didn't annoy the shit out of you because you're like, okay, I just want the video to be over already. You could have clicked off. I mean, that's probably where the biggest drop off is gonna happen in the viewership of this video if I look at the data whenever I click back. Thank you so much for watching until the end. If you did, I appreciate you so much. Um, and make sure you join my Discord. Check out Extreme Gains. Check out uh, Guitar Lifter. Um, and follow me on Twitter. And until next time.